Uh, I want to just say again for everybody coming here from Brother Romney, Brother Mir, and Brother Alameen that the, there's so much energy here. The fact that you came here today, there's a lot to build on in the Bay Area. And building on that is something that, you know, Brother Sunjata said that Lighthouse last year and the other massages in the area, we have to come around and say, hey, how can we work together, sit together, and talk about the contributions? One of the things that um, Brother Imam pointed out was just looking at the youth, looking at the violence, and looking at what's going on in our communities. How can we make all that happen? And so I encourage us all that after this program to get to the masajid, get to the places and talk and open up and know that you can make a difference, inshallah. This is Brother Sharif Nasir. You're going to give a quick talk about a film he's making about the assassination of Malcolm X. Malcolm represents the trials and triumphs of America's democracy. He is America. He represents the painful aspect of our history, and he also represents the tenets of democracy for those people who struggle against injustice. And for me, I thought that his life exemplified the struggles of not only African Americans, but of the human soul and spirit. And when he confronts obstacles, that it utilizes those tenets that America says is what makes America special. We have been the victim of his brutality. We are the ones who face his dogs that tear the flesh from our limbs only because we want to enforce the Supreme Court decision. Malcolm represents the things that the founding fathers of America said. If you see a government, if you see an injustice that is taking place, then it is the right of the citizen to overthrow that injustice. Well, any time you live in a society supposedly based upon law, and it doesn't enforce its own law because the color of a man's skin happens to be wrong, then I say those people are justified to resort to any means necessary to bring about justice where the government can't give them justice. Are you not, perhaps, afraid of what might happen to you as a result of making these revelations? Oh, yes. I probably am a dead man already. The injustices that was done to Malcolm also is reflected in the carelessness in which the New York City Police Department, the FBI, and the District Attorney's Office of New York, how they handled the case and how they bungled the case. And I have to say that the New York City Police Department bungled the, uh, the investigation, lost, had no particular interest in solving it. I think that the Nation of Islam uh, perhaps played a role in their conflict with Malcolm. I don't know I don't have any knowledge of anyone trying to kill Malcolm. When it all played out, I think that there were conflicting organizations who may not have been together, but they had one goal and objective, which is that they were all upset at Malcolm X. And when the deal went down, everybody can say, hey, we got what we wanted, even though we played different roles. John Ali, the national secretary, admitted, uh, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, one of these days last week, that they absolutely were going to kill me. I'm making this film because after making my first film, The Evolution of the Nation of Islam, I gained access to many of Malcolm's people who were there the day he was assassinated. And after asking them many questions about his death and the events leading up to it, it created more questions for me about the events surrounding Malcolm's death and um, all of the hidden aspects that have not been actually investigated yet. The deeper I got into research, the deeper I got into asking more people, uh, interviewing Malcolm's closest associates, even interviewing people that were angry and mad at Malcolm, it created more questions, it created more uh, avenues of, of controversy, and so I just kept going deeper and deeper. Uh, this is an American story, it's an intriguing story, and it's important. Assalamualaikum. Uh, I want to say I'm happy to be here and I appreciate uh, Hashem giving me an invitation to come out and speak with you today. Um, this film that I am doing is actually a continuation of the first one. The first film I did was on the evolution of the nation, how they went from uh, the nation of Islam into Islam of the Quran and Sunnah. And during the course of that film, uh, as I stated there, I gained a lot of access to people who 
had previously refused to talk about Malcolm's uh, death, about the events leading up to um, his death. So I went back and I asked them if I did a film just covering his assassination, would they be willing to come on record? Would they be willing to come on camera and say what they had been telling me off camera? And some said no. <laughs> others said yes. The ones who said no, they changed their mind. And others that have not still changed their mind, we're still trying to get them to change their mind. Um, I've been in communication with uh, various law enforcement officials. Um, in fact, the lead investigator on Malcolm's death, uh, a guy by the name of Detective Ferdinand Cavallero, is about 82 years old, and he refused to talk to me, as did the district attorney. Um, essentially, in Malcolm's death, I won't give away everything, but you got four forces that collided that we know of. Of course, the Nation of Islam and the conflict that he had with them. You have the New York City Police Department. They had a special division in there called BOSSI, B-O-S-S-I. That's an acronym for Bureau of Special Services Investigation. The FBI. And then one that people don't take into consideration, and that is the District Attorney's Office of the State of New York, or the City and County of New York, I should say. They all played different roles. Did they come together and have a meeting decide we're going to do this to Malcolm? No. No. It was more so that at each juncture, can you hear me? Sorry. At each juncture of the, in, um, of the process, they played different roles. They did different things. Okay. Two people, Malcolm was killed by, five, by a team of five participants. There was one lookout there was one who created the disturbance that was in the back. There were two shooters that sat in the front row, and the, behind those two shooters was one other shooter and a lookout person that sat next to that shooter. They pulled three different caliber weapons out of Malcolm's body. A double-eyed buck shotgun, which was first bullet that hit Malcolm's chest from about eight to 10 feet away. As Malcolm hit the deck, hit the uh, stage, a 45 caliber and a nine millimeter were pumped into his body. According to the coroner's report, the first shotgun blast is the one who killed him. It tore apart his aorta. At that point, one of Malcolm's bodyguards he only had one bodyguard. Um, his name was Reuben Francis. Interesting thing about Reuben Francis, he had been commissioned to be Malcolm's personal bodyguard right after the bombing of his home. And the rest of the brothers had always acted as security, so it wasn't necessarily a one-on-one a, a, a -on -one bodyguard, so to speak. He was armed. Reuben was armed that day. We all know that Reuben Francis shot Talmadge Hare in the leg. Talmadge Hare is the only person of the five-man assassination team that was actually caught and convicted. At the trial, Hare refused to name the other four people. The New York City Police Department picked up two men and charged them as being involved in Malcolm's killing, but we all know that those two men were innocent. Reuben Francis, we will show you in this film, has admitted that he shot somebody else before shooting Hare, who was part of that team that was sitting right down here. I have uncovered information that the FBI knew who that person was and had identified the shotgun shooter three weeks after Malcolm had been assassinated. That information was given to the New York City Police Department and they did nothing with it. 
See you in 2015. Um, I would like to say that uh, I have about, I'm about three-fourths of the way finished with this film. And if you could visit my website, Hashim, we'll put it back up. Can you put it back up? You have a website? Okay. Well, my website, uh, I'll be in the lobby if you guys want to talk. And we have a fundraiser going on in which you can donate. And there are some prizes. Um, we're going to have two screenings. You'll get free tickets to that. And there's going to be a DVD when that comes out. You'll get that for free once you join the mailing list. And uh, so I'll be around if you want to have any more questions. Um, no, I will not tell you who the other people are. You'll find that out when you watch the film. <laughs> okay, thank you. Assalamu alaikum.